In 10th place comes in my wife as the student council president. The anime starts off with our main protagonist Izumi, a boy who tries to get the student council president's spot in order to lead the school into a new era. That is, until his rival, Wakana crashes the party and wins the election by a landslide by promoting a healthy relationship policy, forcing our main protagonist to become the vice president of the school rather than the coveted student council president. Even more to beat a dead horse, he finds out that this same girl is also his fiance as organized by their fathers in a drunk meeting when they were just kids. And that's the whole story as different things happen revolving this. In ninth place is Love and Lies. In a futuristic society, Japan has implemented a complex system referred to as the Red Threads of Science to encourage successful marriages and combat increasingly low birth rates. Based on a compatibility calculation, young people at the age of 16 are assigned marriage partners by the government, with severe repercussions awaiting those who disobey the arrangement. For Yukari Najima, a teen that considers himself average in every way, this system might be his best shot at living a fulfilling life. However, spurred by his infatuation for his classmate and longtime crush, Misaki Takasaki, Yukari defies the system and confesses his love. After some initial reluctance, Misaki reciprocates his feelings in a moment of passion. Unfortunately, before the two can further their relationship, Yukari receives his marriage notice. He is then thrown into a confusing web of love and lies when his less than thrilled assigned partner, Ririna Sonata, becomes fascinated with his illicit romance. In eighth place is engaged to the unidentified. It follows Yanamori and her daily life with her fiancé Hakuya that she just met. She found out on her 16th birthday that she had a fiancé and a sister-in-law as a result of an arrangement that her late grandfather made. The storyline is pretty generic like other romantic comedies like this, where a girl meets her unknown fiancé, and as the story goes on they fall in love with each other. However what sets this anime different is that the development or the progress of their relationship is faster than other rom-com, but at the same time gives a convincing bond between Yanamori and Hakoya. Next would be is how they deliver those clichés, they all delivered it well, and in a funny way that anyone could enjoy. Overall this is an enjoyable anime to watch with an absolute banger opening song. In 7th place is Love Tyrant. Death Note is easily one of the most popular and instantly recognizable anime out there. This show is essentially a parody of the series Death Note, but in this instance, the Death Note is now replaced with a new book called The Kiss Note, an extremely powerful tool that can make two people fall in love by writing their names on it, regardless of the gender, providing that they kiss one another that is. This feature, in particular, comes greatly in use for the yaoi enthusiast, Guri, a hyperactive idiot Cupid whose task is to match up potential couples with each other. However, she accidentally writes the main protagonist's name in the book by the name of Seiji, and he has to kiss someone otherwise Guri will die. He then decides to kiss his crush, who turns out to have a mad obsession with our main character. That's basically the whole story and overall it was a very funny anime to watch with some crazy girls. In sixth place is My Bride is a Mermaid. During his summer vacation, middle school student Nagasumi travels to the Sido Inland Sea. One day, while swimming at Neo Sun Beach, his leg suddenly cramps. No one is close enough to notice his desperate screams for help, and so he sinks into the ocean, where he is left to drown alone. Just as he loses consciousness however, a mermaid appears and saves his life. That night, Nagasumi is visited by his savior, a girl who introduces herself as Sun Sido a mermaid from a Yakuza family. As it turns out, under mermaid law, a mermaid whose identity is revealed to a human must be punished by execution. To avoid this harrowing outcome, the Sido family propose a solution, Nagasumi must marry Sun or die at the hands of Gauzaburu, son's father and boss of the Sido clan. 
Faced with no other option, Nagasumi takes her hand in marriage. In fifth place is the world is still beautiful. Levi Uzifrikia has conquered the entire world and expanded the Sun Kingdom's influence in the three short years since he was crowned king. Upon learning about the powers to create rain, Levius decides to marry Remercier, one of the princesses of the rain dukedom. However, those outside the Sun Kingdom have spread a rumor that Levius is a cruel, ruthless, and tyrannical ruler, and as word reaches the princess, she begins to prepare herself for the worst. But when she finally meets her fiancé, she discovers that he is an entirely different person from what she originally expected. In fourth place is Wolf Girl and Black Prince. Erica has taken to lying about her romantic exploits to earn the respect of her new friends. So when they ask for a picture of her boyfriend, she hastily snaps a photo of a handsome stranger, whom her friends recognize as the popular and kind-hearted Kyoya. Trapped in her own web of lies and desperately trying to avoid humiliation, Erika explains her predicament to Kyoya, hoping he will pretend to be her boyfriend. But Kyoya is not the angel he appears to be, he is actually a mean-spirited sadist who forces Erika to become his dog in exchange for keeping her secret. In third place is Arakawa under the bridge. Koichi Namiya is the son of a wealthy businessman who holds a firm belief in his elite status. As such, he is determined to avoid becoming indebted to anyone, but one day, after a run-in with some mischievous kids on Arakawa Bridge, he ends up falling into the river running underneath. Luckily for him, a passerby is there to save him, but now, he owes his life to this stranger. Angered by this, Ko insists on paying her back, but this may just be the worst deal the arrogant businessman has ever made. The stranger is stoic, tracksuit-wearing homeless girl known only as Nino lives in a cardboard box under the bridge and wants only one thing, to fall in love. Asking Ko to be her boyfriend, he has no choice but to accept, forcing him to move out of his comfortable home and start a new life under the bridge. In second place is Mayo Chiki. This is an example of a nice comedy, I thought this was going to be boring, but I really enjoyed this and a lot. It's about a girl who hides the fact that she is a girl so she can be a butler, but our main character, Kenjiro finds out about this by accident, and he is menaced to hide this, or she will make him disappear. The story is good even if this sounds silly, but there's no ending, that bothered me, it ended with a normal episode, and that's the only problem I have. But overall it's really enjoyable to watch. In first place is Twin Star Exorcists. Magano, a parallel realm filled with monsters known as Kagari, is a place where exorcists deal with all impurities. Adashino is a prodigy exorcist who is recognized for her strength and is summoned to Tokyo by the Exorcist Union. On her way, she plummets into the arms of Rokuro, a young exorcist with a troubled past. But the impurities of Magano do not rest. When these two exorcists witness a couple of children stolen by a Kagari, Adashino rushes to save them, dragging Rokuro along with her into Magano. Engaged in a fight she is on the verge of being defeated in, Adashino is saved by Rokuro, revealing himself capable of being her rival in talent.